So my name is PC Jodie Fellows. I am one of the youth and missing officers in Devon and Cornwall Police. Uh, we have four youth and missing officers in Cornwall um, and we're lucky to have had two of, uh, of us working on the project for Erasmus and that's myself and PC Jay Dorman. Um, part of the project um, which has been really interesting for us as police officers has been um, comparing our practice to those of, of the other countries. Um, what was quite interesting that came of one of the visits to Italy was that Italy have their uh, entire youth justice system very separate to uh, to the normal adult youth, uh, justice system. And they've got sort of their own um, police stations and police buildings that youths and you know, children and young people can go to without ever sort of stepping foot in, in any kind of adult police station or police building. So that was real fascinating because we didn't know about that. Um, what another thing that came out of the, um, the, the transnational meetings were that actually, you know, Britain, in England and Wales have got one of the lowest um, ages of criminal responsibility out of Europe. So our current um, age for criminal responsibility is 10 years old which is quite ludicrous when you compare it to some of the the other um the other countries so they were quite interested you know the, the other countries were quite interested in why, why ours is so low um and I think it's a question that definitely needs addressing so it'd been really nice as a bit of an outcome of, of this project to, to maybe address that no not without doing any kind of real academic research as to why why it is so low and why it stayed so low for a young time especially when we're knowing more and more about the developing brain and the fact that you know our developing brains might not actually ever be fully developed until mid-20s it just seems absolutely ludicrous that ours is so so low but um i think what is interesting is that a lot of our work as youth and missing officers um and the child-centered policing strategies that are coming forward are actually about prevention of young people being on the criminal justice system so not letting these children go to court treating them as children yes they might have committed crimes but let's put some kind of like prevention package in place preventative support rather than punitive so that that's that it, i think it shows that we're we're going in the right direction about it so as a police officer normally you would start on the 909 calls as a response officer um, to begin with for at least two years whilst you're doing your probation and then you're free to apply for other roles within the police. Um, I know now, nowadays there's degree programmes and direct entry and things so, but, but back sort of 15 years ago when I joined it was very much it was, you sort of did your, your two years on, on the response and then and then you were you know sort of free to, to apply for other roles and during that time um, I did six years on there. <sighs> I got quite frustrated really with jobs. So I would go get a 909 call to go to a job and it would be maybe a domestic incident and you would have a family there, clearly domestic abuse going on within the family. And that, you know, that might be male on female, females on female, um, children on adults, adults on children, just, just whatever kind of domestic um, situations. And you would go there and you try to sort of deal with what's in front of you at that point, try and make everyone safe, deal with any criminal matters if, if there was any coming forward. And maybe the next week you'd get called to the same address or the following week you get called again. And I can remember like questioning as a professional is like, what are we doing? And it was almost like sticking a plaster on what was happening at that moment at that time. But actually, is there anything more that we can do? And I think we've come a really long way. In, in 15 years that I can certainly say that I've been in the police, we've definitely come a long way with the learning, um, with more academic research coming into police training programmes. So we're actually getting a really uh, sort of an overall view and understanding, knowledge and understanding um, of, of what it actually, you know, yes, we're going there on a 999 call and the behaviour and signs and symptoms that we're seeing at the time do need to be dealt with. But quite often there is an underlying um, problem or issue that needs addressing and the police aren't always the best ones to do that so we might get called to that 999 call because there's violence or there's um, disruption you know the neighbours might have called it in because they can hear um, sort of you know disorder going on next door and we get there and that you know those people don't want to talk to the police because we're there in a uniform we're there for a reason there's children in the address they don't want to talk to the police so there are issues ongoing and quite a lot of them are you know sort of traumas and, and, and aces is ongoing but we're not always the best people to deal with them so once we'd come away what we do now which is really good is is we can offer, offer support 
to families. Um, so external support, third party, third sector, so volunteer, voluntary organisations, um, domestic abuse charities to, to actually work with them. So not the police sort of going in and, and coming in with our big boots and, and trying to sort of disrupt things for them, but actually families can work with specialised support to, to tackle ACEs and trauma as they're ongoing. And that's been a really uh, big change, I think, in, in sort of pushing that support rather than us coming and taking people away straight away when that, that's not always the answer to every situation. It is sometimes because we do need to make, make people say, feel safe and we do need to sort of deal with criminal matters that are there. But I think, yeah, I think the, the sort of longer term problem solving is now in, in, in most police officers' mind as opposed to deal with what's in front of us and then go away. I think there's been a disproportionate amount of young children that have been put in care quite often because of ACEs and trauma and quite often they are disproportionately represented in young offenders institutions um, in, in front of judges for various various crimes and I think that stems from because they're in care quite often the professionals working with those young people are told to report crimes you know if that young person um, is dysregulated and slams a door and it breaks they they have to report that whereas children that are looked after in their own homes they might have the same kind of meltdown for over an incident over over for a reason but that criminal damage to a door may not be reported to the police and obviously as the police if we get um, a crime reported to us we have to investigate it and quite often it's not in the public interest for us to pursue that that child but it has been reported against their name so I think I think I would say the the I think my, my, my sentence to sum that question up would be that quite often children who have experienced ACEs and trauma and have perhaps entered the care system are disproportionately criminalised because of that because of their circumstances which which needs to change it, it is changing but it needs to change a little bit but um, a bit faster, I think. I think the Erasmus project has directly influenced um, police training, especially for neighbourhood teams. Uh, we've had our superintendent, um, Sarah Crane, came to Sweden and saw the way that they work um, jointly with, with police over there, so schools and social care working with the police, and took from that quite a lot of learning. Yeah, she's taken from that and then how we can do more joined up approaches to young people um, and really tackle ACEs and trauma in quite a holistic, a holistic way. Um, I think the project's also allowed us to have the conversations about ACEs and trauma and what impact that is on, on um, children and young people within the crime sort of area, the crime aspect. So young people that are committing antisocial behaviour, the ones that may be seen to be um, committing low level crimes, as to ask these questions. Why are these children out in the early hours of the morning? Why are these children not being um, looked after at home properly? Um, why are they stealing food? Are they not being nourished? It's, it's more professional questioning, I think, has come as a matter of, of this course, which has been brilliant. It's funny, isn't it? When you're talking, I'm talking about it and I'm thinking about how harrowing it is when you're going into, you know, a house and you're seeing domestic violence suffer. And yes, you can go as a police officer and deal with the crimes. And yes, you can deal with as many support packages as that person will consent to for, for their family and their children. But you've still got to walk away at the end of the day and you still know that that child is in quite a, you know, a harrowing situation. And that does affect you as a police officer, as a person, as a mum, as a family, you know, as a, as a mother, it does affect you. And I think it's quite hard um, to know that it, there's always going to be people suffering ACEs. But the one thing we can do as a community is make sure that there's enough support in there at all different stages of life, because, you know, somebody might not want to take any assistance at that particular moment, but they might want to accept help later on down the line when they're you know feeling a bit better about it or they've been given time or thought process but it's, it's allowing that help to be constantly there when someone's ready to take it. I think interprofessional working um, is crucial to dealing with these children um, who are suffering or have suffered ACEs and trauma and I think going in with different hats on so the police have sort of one agenda which is normally sort of crime and welfare um, social care are obviously there for the welfare of the child um, you know you have third third sector um, support groups you know for instance drug um, addictions 
actually we're all there for the same reason which is to make this child feel safe and well um, and I think in Cornwall we do it really well because we've got lots and lots of um, interprofessional links and multi-agency meetings which we um, are, are attending on a, on a regular basis so there will be police sitting down with youth workers that we sat down with social care that we sat down with um, voluntary organisations again with the same um, outcome or, or aim is to you know has this child got enough support to help them through the aces or help them through the trauma that they may have suffered um, and I think it's working really well um, computer systems are always the the crucial sticking point and it is in any kind of research that you read about where it's gone wrong and it's about the disclosure of information as to who you can disclose it to and when to disclose but actually you know we need the consent for some disclosures of the children and young people and their families. Um, that's always a bit of a sticking point sometimes. But I think on the whole, most people are doing it for the right reasons. And again, with the aim of the ch child's welfare in the centre. So, you know, it, it does work really well. I think COVID has had an extreme negative effect on the children that we're dealing with in our role as a youth and missing officer. And um, we're seeing it mainly in, in young men um, with violence, peer on peer of violence has increased massively um, as a result of COVID. So whether it's lockdown has eased and the young people um, are out and about and they've got extra time on their hands and they're sort of meeting with others who feel feel the same, they feel sort of caged in and now they've been allowed out. I'm not sure what the, um, it'd be really interesting if there's any studies is on it as a result of the, the pandemic, but we're seeing a lot of, like I said, you know, peer on peer violence, especially with young men. And I think as professionals, as a collective um, community of professionals, we need to bear that in mind when we're trying to deal with them. So yes, we're going to have victims of crimes and yes, we're going to have suspects of crimes, but we've all been suffering the same pandemic, but coming from def very different areas and different reasons. And I think that almost needs to be a professional question um, to consider the effect of the pandemic on these young people. Um, so I was really honoured to be asked to be part of the Erasmus project, um, especially with the uh, subject being around ACEs and trauma. I just completed a degree and my dissertation was focused on um, the vulnerability of missing children. And obviously a lot of that touched on, you know, why people go missing, why children go missing and the, the push and pull factors of that. Um, and quite often, you know, ACEs or trauma or both um, was a huge factor in, in, in these children's life. So to be part of a project, uh, you know, a, a transnational project about um, ACEs and trauma was was fantastic it's a really good timing as well and I'm quite excited about the resources because actually we've got a whole um, kind of toolkit that professionals can use and tap into as and when um, and even just you know watch a couple of the videos just for kind of chatting purposes you know it's sort of professional conversations I think they call them just to talk about it and get and get the knowledge and understanding just like we've come you know around domestic abuse specifically but just about ACEs and trauma you know and, and the effect it has on people not only when it's it's actually ongoing but for years and years after you know the long-lasting damage of, of, of it that can, can affect people and I think it's something that us as professionals and as people just need to be aware that you know, the people we live around, the community we're in, lots of people have got lots of things going on. And it's it's a kind of community understanding, I suppose. And I think that's quite exciting to be to be part of that.